Hello again. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Morris Barrett and I've got another study in the parables and hard sayings of Jesus. I've written four books up to now. These studies will go in the, the fifth book and they're available from uh, www.barrettministries.org.uk or from uh, Amazon as a Kindle download or paperback. And we have a new shop on Shopify. If you go to the Barrett Ministries Facebook page, there's a link to the new shop. You can buy them there. This is a, a controversial study, I suppose. I'm talking about blasphemy from the Holy Ghost against the Holy Ghost. And I think every man and his dog has an opinion on what's blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. I've heard so many people say it's this and it's that. So I'm going to throw my thoughts into the arena and it's up to you. You can take it or leave it. Hopefully I'll base it on the Bible and, and you'll find it acceptable. So I'm going to read Mark chapter 3 verse 22 to 30. This is the incident where it says blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. Actually it's in a few Gospels and I'll cover everything that it says about it. But this is the context. This is why Jesus said it. The scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebub, and by the prince of devils casted he out devils. And he called them unto him, he says, Come here. I know what you're thinking. And he said to them in a parable, so this is the parable, How can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, the kingdom can't stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand, but hath an end. So Satan's not going to fight himself. Satan's not going to cast out devils, is he? He's, he's, he's shooting himself in the foot. He's killing his own men. And if Satan, Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand, but hath an end. No man can enter a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except first he will bind the strong man and then will spoil his house. What he's saying there, that's, people use that scripture about binding the strong man, we've got to bind demons. That's the only scripture they can find and it's not talking about demons. It's just a, a principle. If you want to take over a house, you've got to deal with the man who owns it. In other words, you've got to deal with the roots. That's what he's saying. Verily I say to you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men. So every sin can be forgiven. So there's no sin that can't be forgiven. And blasphemies, wheresoever they shall blaspheme. So blasphemy, blasphemy can be forgiven. Jesus said so. But he that blasphemes against the Holy Ghost hath neither, never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. Notice, it doesn't say you'll be damned. He says you're in danger. So he's not saying if you blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, you're damned. He's saying you're in danger. That's a big difference, isn't it? Because they said he hath an unclean spirit. So that's why he said it. Because they said Jesus has an unclean spirit and he's casting out devils by the prince of devils. So I've put it up on the screen. Jesus didn't say they'd be damned. He says they were in danger of being damned. You're on dangerous ground when you blaspheme. Luke 12 verse 10. Here's another one. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, that's him, of course, he's talking about himself, the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. So you can speak against Jesus and he can be forgiven. But unto him that blasphemes against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. So there's a difference. If Jesus is God and the Holy Ghost is God, if they're all one, why does he separate it? He said, you can blaspheme me, the Son, but if you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, and I believe the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of God, so you're blaspheming God, aren't you? You can blaspheme the Son and I can forgive you, but if you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, it shall not be forgiven. And Matthew 12. So this is three Gospels where it's the same incident. 
But there's different connotations for each one. So you can blaspheme the Son, Jesus, but you can't blaspheme the, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. And whoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, so it's, it's confirming it, it shall be forgiven him. But whoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. And then there's a clue here. It said it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither the world to come. Well, I don't think the world to come is eternity. The kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of Christ. He's talking about the coming kingdom, the millennium. They'll never be forgiven in this world or the world to come. The next world, the world to come, is the, the, the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of Christ. It's the kingdom coming, isn't it? Jesus is bringing the kingdom. There's a new world order. So it doesn't say you'll be damned, it says you're in danger and you won't be forgiven in this world, neither in the world to come, neither through the millennium. So what's the background again to this? Well, the scribe said that he had a devil, Beelzebub. Beelzebub is a Hebrew word and it means Lord of the Flies, a Philistine deity worshipped at Ekron. But there's two words, there's Baalzebub that, that Matthew mentions and there's Beelzebub in another gospel. It's the same one and it's Aramaic, uh, Aramaic the uh, Beelzebub and it means lords of the house. It's the name of Satan, the prince of devils. So it, it's, it's Satan, isn't it? Beelzebub or Baalzebub, it, it means the same. So it's not too different people it, it's it's satan matthew 10 verse 25 jesus said it's enough for the disciple to be as his master and the servant as his lord we can't be better than jesus but it's good if we're like Jesus. so it's it's good it's enough if the disciples like his master and the servant is the lord well he says if that's so if they've called the master of the house Beelzebub, so they've called Jesus Satan, the blaspheme, the Holy Ghost, how much more shall they call them of his household? So expect them to say to you, you've got a devil, you, that's not God, because they said that about Jesus. So for Satan to cast out Satan, his house would be divided. So it's clearly equating Beelzebub with Satan. Because it talks about Satan and then Beelzebub. So we, we know that it's talking about Satan. And I, I've covered the, the bind of the strong man. I don't think it's a bind devils. I can't find anywhere in the Bible where Jesus bound a devil. I can't find where Paul or Peter or any of the, they never bound devils. The commandment is cast out devils. That's not binding them. They're free. When you cast a devil out, it's free. You can't, no authority to bind a demon in the pit. The devil's cried out to Jesus, have you come to torment us before our time? They will be bound for eternity one day, but we can't bind them now. It's, it's pride and arrogance to, to try and bind devils. Jesus said when the a devil is cast out of a man. The devil looks around and he's, he's in dry places. He's nowhere to dwell. He's lost his house. Because God dwells in our mortal body, so do demons. So if a demon's cast out, where is he going to go? He can't manifest. His, demons have to manifest through material things. You know, Mary Poppins, a, a, a table, a, a plate flies across the room or a, a man manifests. Satan has to manifest through the creation, doesn't he? Like God does. He manifests through people. God doesn't want to manifest. You don't hear a voice in the corner of the room. He has a prophet to speak. God works through humanity. He works through his creation. And so does Satan. So he wants to inhabit people. So when he's, he's cast out, he's a, a disembodied spirit. He's got no body to manifest through. How can he show anger through the air? He's got to get in people to show his anger or cast out into the pigs and drown them. He's got to show his anger through humanity. 
So he looks round and he, he sees the house he was cast out of and he said, oh, it's empty. See, when you cast a devil out, it needs to be fulfilled with the, filled with the presence of God because you, you're a vacuum. When the devil goes out, there's an empty space there and nature abhors a vacuum, it'll suck something in. And you need, when you cast a devil out of somebody, they need to be full of Christ. They need filling with the Holy Ghost, don't they? So the devil can't get back in. Because Jesus said, if, you, if he comes and finds the place swept and clean, no demons in it, he said he comes in and he brings seven other devils more powerful than himself. And the state of that man is worse than when the devil was cast out. That's scary. It, it's not for novices casting out devils. You know, you may do harm, more harm than good. You need, people need filling with the Holy Ghost when the devil's got out of them. They need something to replace that because otherwise the devil will come back. How many people have been delivered and they've gone back again because there was a vacuum? So he's not talking about binding demons. He's talking about dealing with the roots of the matter. You, you can't take over a house unless you tie up the owner or, and steal his goods. So, blasphemy, blasphemy can be forgiven unless it's against the Holy Ghost. And it seems the only sin, sin mentioned in the Bible that can't be forgiven in this life or the life to come. So it's a serious consideration, isn't it? So the question is, how do we blaspheme the Holy Ghost? Is it a sin? Is it to disobey God? Is it crossing the line into witchcraft? What is it? Well, we need the Bible to explain the Bible. Which are the unforgivable sins? I, I've found two ways that we can cross the line an unforgivable sin. Hebrews 10, verse 26. I speak, the others judge. I'll leave you to, to, to see if you agree. Paul says this, he's talking to Christians. If we sin willfully, so I sin every day, we all do, but it's, it's not what I want to do. I'm not rebellious, I'm weak. I sin because it's, 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 I'm human flesh and until I get the new body, I'll keep sinning. But if you decide to sin, not weakness, for if we sell willfully after we've received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. You can't be forgiven. If there's no more sacrifice for sins, where does it leave you? If you sin willfully. That's not, I must say, that's not weakness. That's not, oh, I've got a problem with pornography. I've got a problem. I keep committing adultery and I repent and, and then I go and do it again. That's a weak man, isn't it? And I can be forgiven. Weakness, there's no problem with sin and weakness. The problem is rebellion. Every sin can be forgiven. We've just read that. But rebellion, the blood of Christ can't cover rebellion. It can cover sin. But sin's not a rebellion. Sin is weakness, isn't it? We're born in sin. We're conceived in sin. But rebellion's a different thing. That's your choice. And if you sin willfully, after you've received the knowledge of the truth, when you know the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. But a certain, a certain, not maybe, a certain, fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. That's a fearful God, isn't it? And he's saying it's worse now than in the Old Testament. In the Old Covenant, he that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. They couldn't have mercy on him if he deserved it. If those two witnesses agreed, he had to die without mercy. But he's saying, we're in the new could have how much more sore a punishment suppose ye shall be thought, he shall be thought worthy, who's trodden under foot the Son of God. This is serious. You're trampling under the foot the Son of God and counted the blood of the covenant an unclean thing where he was sanctified, an unholy thing, and has done despite to the spirit of grace. You're saved by grace. So if you fall from grace, there's no salvation because you're only saved by grace, aren't you? Whatever you've saved, it's by grace, by faith you receive grace. So whatever you believe that the, the blood of Christ will save you, it will save you, you've got grace. 
But if you count the blood of Christ an unholy thing, if you say the blood can't save me, there's no power in the blood, you've done despite to the spirit of grace. Turn back to the last scripture, Johnny. Of how much more sore a punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who's trodden underfoot the Son of God. You've trampled Christ underfoot. You've crucified him afresh, Paul said, because you've counted the blood of the covenant an unholy thing. It's nothing. The blood of Jesus can't save you. That's rebellion after you've known. He's talking to Christians. So if you turn and say, I don't believe in the blood of Christ, how can you keep your salvation? Wherewith he was sanctified, so the blood of Christ sanctified you, you've called it unholy. You've blasphemed and done despite unto the spirit of grace. For we know that he saith, vengeance belongeth to me, I'll recompense, saith the Lord. Again, the Lord shall judge his people. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And he's not talking about the sinners, he's talking to Christians, it's Hebrews. And he's saying the Old Testament was severe, but how much more severe should it be? See, if you count the sacrifice of a bull or a goat or a lamb unholy, it's not so bad. But if you count the blood of Christ an unholy thing, there's all more forgiveness for sins. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of Almighty God. But Paul says, but it's all right. But we are not of them who draw back into perdition. Perdition's the same word as damnation. We're not those who draw back into damnation, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. We're not all of them. This is verse 39, so it's eight verses later. I can't read all the verses. But this is where he said, you trample the, the blood of Christ, Son of God underfoot. Fancy trampling Christ underfoot. Fancy despising the blood of Christ. So I believe that can't be forgiven because you, you disqualify yourself. You've fallen from grace. You said the blood can't save you. So you've no faith in the blood and you're saved by faith. We're not like those who draw back into damnation. They were saved, but they drew back into damnation. But with those who believe to the saving of your soul, I think that's a strong verse. I think false prophets have crossed the line. Because when Paul's ta Peter's talking about them in 2 Peter 2, they've trampled the, trampled the cross of fire, Christ underfoot. Because it talks about them being damned. So there's no forgiveness if you're damned, is there? And, and it says they've known the way of righteousness. 2 Peter 2. Verse 3, these are the false prophets. These are people, they're not the tares. They're not the devil's plants in the church. The tares in the parable, the devil has planted them. 2 Peter 2 makes clear, these are people who've known the way of righteousness. I think we'll read it in a bit. They, they know the way of righteousness and been cleansed from the sins, but they've turned like a dog to the vomit. They've gone back, trampled the the cross of Christ underfoot. And through covetousness, they shall with feigned words make merchandise of you, bums on seats for money. Give to God and I'm his banker. Give to God and I'll pray for you and God will bless you if you give a hundred dollars. That's making merchandise of you. That's trading in the souls of men, isn't it? Babylon. Make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. That's a strong word when God says damnation. And their damnation slumbereth not. And verse 21, 20 and 21. And this shows that they've been Christians. They've, For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, so, so they must have been saved. They've escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and Saviour. So he was the Saviour. If they are again entangled, 
and overcome, the latter end is worse than at the beginning. Better than never saved, than to be saved and turned back. For it is better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. So it clearly proves that these false prophets have known the way of righteousness. But the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches have choked them. They've become unfruitful and in the end have trampled across underfoot. They have known the way of righteousness. Then after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. And it's the next verse says, and it's like the true proverb. The dog has returned to his vomit and the sow that was washed has re gone back to wallowing in the mire. Jude verse 4. Jude is all about false prophets. There's the whole book of Jude, it's only one chapter, isn't it? And Jude says the same thing. He's talking about people crept unawares into the church for there are certain men crept in unawares. We didn't realise that they came in the church subtly who were before ordained of this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of God unto the lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Saviour Jesus Christ. They're not denying him by the speech because they preach. These people who are covetous and want our money, they preach truth, they preach salvation by grace, but they deny the Lord Jesus by the lifestyle. They deny him by how they live. They're covetous. So the hypocrites aren't they? Because they say one thing, Jesus is holy, but they don't want to be separate from the world. They're more worldly than the world, many of them. Is there another verse, Jay? Is that it? So it's a short study. I've come to the end. So the conclusion. Mark 3.30. Why couldn't they be forgiven? Blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. It, it says, because they said he has an unclean spirit. So, I believe the unforgivable sin, blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, is to say somebody who speaks with God voice, it's the devil speaking. Because Jesus was God's word. He was speaking truth. And they said that's the devil. He's casting out devils by the prince of devils and one time the, the Pharisee said he's beside himself he's got a devil to say somebody speaking with God's voice is a devil and the other way is you trample underfoot the son of God and count the blood of the new covenant which sanctifieth an unclean thing you've turned again Paul said if you turn again and count the blood of the covenant. There's no more forgiveness of sins, only a fearful looking of judgment. You've crossed the line. So I believe there's the two ways. Maybe there's more ways, I don't know. But certainly, there's two ways that you can't be forgiven. Blaspheme against the Spirit of God. To say somebody who speaks with the truth, to say he's got a devil. They said about Jesus, they said he's, a de he's got a devil. Fancy saying that about Jesus, that can't be forgiven. And when you tr count the blood of Christ an unclean thing, you're rebellious, you turn again as a dog to his vomit, your damnation is just, he says. So if, if your damnation is just, there's no forgiveness for sins. So the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of God. And to call it the Spirit of Satan, it's against God. See, you can speak against Jesus, but God's the supreme. He's the Father, isn't he? It's all about God. Jesus was the, the Son. Or turn again after serving God and serving Satan. So it's a short study. I'm going to pray that God will give us understanding and, and a fear of turning against God once you've known the truth. He said it's better to have never known the truth and been washed in from your sins than turn again. It's a fearful thing because you're trampling the blood of Christ underfoot, the Son of God underfoot. Lord, please help us. It's a very serious thing, Lord, to say that we can't lose our salvation. Once saved, always saved. Lord, it's such a doctrine of devils because clearly these people were saved. 
and they've been better to never know the way of righteousness. He said the damnation is just. Lord, these are people who were saved and washed in the blood of the Lamb, and yet they damned because they blasphemed the Holy Ghost. They committed the unforgivable sin. I pray, Lord, you'll give us a fear of God, that we don't turn back to perdition, to damnation, but we live by faith, that we always acknowledge that the blood of Christ cleanses sin, that Jesus is the Son of God, and whatever he said is truth, and the devil doesn't know truth. He turns the truth of God into a lie. Lord, give us discernment and a fear of God that will keep us in these last days when there's so many doctrines going around, so much nonsense in the church, Lord, and so much anarchy and rebellion in the world. Keep us strong, Lord. Quicken us with your spirit that we stay faithful to the end. I ask it, Lord, in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Well, thanks for watching. Tune in to the next study. A very interesting study. The mystery of the seed. How does the seed grow? Jesus said it's a mystery. And I'll explain it in the next study. Have a wonderful week. God bless you.